G'day folks, here's a quick little video for you home gamers who have access to a TIG welder. Hey! So, yeah, for you home gamers who have access to a TIG welder and need to get inner bearing or outer bearing shells out of um, tight places. I know AVE did a video and kind of made a mess of it, gave, gave, gave you the rough idea of what to do, but he was using a MIG welder which puts lots of bits of spatter, bits of like burnt molten metal everywhere. This is a TIG welder, this is like a, it's like an electrical um, oxy torch, essentially. Um, you go along using the, the arc as your flame and you add filler rod when you're welding, or you, um, you can fuse things with it. It's just a direct DC electrical arc. And uh, all I've done is stitch this in a race in four places, just 200 amps or whatever it is at the moment. Oh, it's about 150 amps. And I've just sort of just gone back and forth with the arc and just softened and made this bit glow then that bit and that bit and that bit and let it cool down and now this shell just moves by hand. It's just it's collapsed in on itself. So yeah. Because you can't really get in any way to pull that out. And there. They even managed to save the um, the part number on it. 30208J. Clean all the schmoo up later. And let's do the front one, the front main. New bearings for this thing are like 100 bucks a set, so they're not that bad. And these ones are chowdered and uh, need to be replaced. All right, let's see how we, how we go about the front one. I know someone's gonna flick their shit because I'm not wearing gloves, but uh, I can't find them right now. And to be honest, this is short-term exposure. If I was doing this for a few hours on end, I'd definitely be wearing gloves. Burn off a bit of oil. <laughs> It's a lot bigger than the other one, so I'm going to do a bit more heat. And that's that. Let it cool down and she should just slide straight out. It does destroy the bearing, but uh, the bearings weren't useful for much more than just really crude projects anyway. And since there's only one of each size, nothing of value is lost and the customer gets the job done quickly. So yeah, as you can see, no filler, no nothing. I'm just using the arc to melt the base metal. And as you can see, I haven't melted the headstock. I've just melted the uh, outer race. And as it cools down, it's gonna contract and I can just drag it straight out while it's warm. This one's gone cold and a bit sticky, but uh, yeah. The story behind this machine you'll see later in a more, little more elaborate series. I mean, I didn't get pulling the spindle on video, but uh, yeah, this machine had polyurethane poured in the headstock instead of gear oil by accident at a uh, local college and a good friend of mine picked it up for basically free and wants to spend a little bit of money making it good again so we're doing the spindle bearings which copped the most of the abuse and I've cleaned up the um, the quick change box and everything because they poured urethane in there so it's all uh, all working now. It's pretty good. Like the bedways and everything are almost new, all the scraping still visible, no major scores or dings or dents. A couple of tiny little pock marks, but uh, for a freebie, it's worth spending a few hundred dollars on. Okay, it's been sitting for a couple of minutes, given the, the mass of the headstock, like this thing's probably 35, 40 degrees Celsius at the most. Maybe a little bit more. Let's just see if I can uh, 
get this thing out by hand, I'm not even prying it with anything. I can see movement, yep. Yeah, there we go. Look at that, no tools needed. And I've already got the dimensions and things. I know what bearings I need to order, but yeah, the part number's under all that schmoo there. That's cool. I'll take them into uh, Frankston Bearings tomorrow and uh, get some new ones because they, they wanted me to bring the outers in. I took the spindle in with the inners and they said just bring the outers anyway even though you're going to burn them out um, and I agree with that so I'll go down there tomorrow and buy a new set and uh, fit them up. That's going to be interesting. I've never done... I think I'm going to have to freeze the spindle and heat the bearings to get them on because they're definitely going to be close and I don't have a press so that could be interesting. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more. I've got to clean all the gunk out of this, like this urethane and oil and all kinds of crap, so this whole lot has to be fully cleaned up, clean out the, um, the oil passage in the bottom there, which is it's all very tiny and very simple. It's just a matter of being a bit meticulous with uh, cleaning it because you don't want to stuff the new bearings up. And these bearings in here are also bad, so they're going to come out. That's fine. And I've got new new belts on order for it as well. Yeah, not too bad. It's just again, it was a free machine from an old college, and uh, yeah, it's gone to a good home. Well, sorry, it's not mine. I should emphasise that it's not mine. It's a job, but it's going to a good home. Someone who wants to learn, someone who's been dying to get their hands on a lathe, which is fantastic. I think this is a great machine to learn on. Main thing is to get it to uh, do some proper uh, good quality work. Because right now, well, beforehand, that's the finish you got with the um, the old bearings. Not good. Real chowdery. Even in plastic, even in acetal and nylon, it was ch just chowdering the hell out of it. Stainless steel. Yeah, she wasn't happy. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Um, yeah, it pays to have a TIG welder around. And these um, Magmate 200... Um, the BOC branded ones, they're a pretty good machine. Inverter based, all Toshiba semiconductors. I've pushed that machine pretty hard and it, it works really well. So yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more. Okay, here's just a quick look at what the shells look like after I cleaned them up. Basically you just do four stitches. Um, I did put a bit of heat into it as you can see and once it cools down it just contracts and just closes up ever so slightly and it literally took two or three fingers just to wiggle it out and drag it out of the um, out of the um, the housing yeah even on the back side it doesn't look like it's penetrated all the way but that's still enough to close it up same with that one a little bit of discoloration but it, again it doesn't burn through it doesn't have to just that metal cooling that pool of metal cooling down is enough to close this up. It's a very interesting way of doing it, and it's, it's destructive, obviously. You can't use these again, or the the inners, but uh, if you've got to get them out, and you can't basically can't drive them out from the back, you're going to have to heat it. Well, I recommend a TIG. You can use a MIG, but you get a lot of splatter and stuff going everywhere. If you use an Oxy, again, you start burning the steel and spattering everywhere. The TIG is the best. I didn't. I don't think I saw a little bit of spatter at all. Maybe a few little sparks. That's about it. So I'm not contaminating the rest of the area, the works of the machine, that kind of stuff. It um, it actually ticked a lot better than I expected. I expected these to start spitting and hissing and popping and carrying on, but not a problem. I guess being low carbon steel, the carbon's not burning out of it. You could TIG this stuff pretty well. Anyway, thanks for watching.